Hello, uh, today we're going to be doing a quick teardown of the Finerci SWM10. I assume that stands for Spot Welding Machine 10. Um, this is a fairly simple um, machine for battery spot welding. It comes with these very nice probes and it's got uh, these screw in pins here. Um, these got a little flat place here so that if you uh, take a can unscrew these. Um, comes with two replacements here that just screw in. So you just grab onto the flat part with a with a uh, pair of pliers and unscrew them. Comes with a crappy USB lead, and these are fairly thick um, and substantial cables. I did some random testing with the uh, strip that came in the box, and it seems to be able to work fairly well. Um, it does get pretty hot, so careful where you're doing this. But overall, you got these two cables, not polarized, and I really like this because unlike the other spot welders on AliExpress where I got this, I think I paid about $46 for this, uh, 46 Canadian dollars. Um, this is plastic or rubbery, and I like the molded strain reliefs on here. Normally this is all um, just bare metal, or it's a uh, heat shrink, but this is really nice because it's it's got the grips on it, sort of like multimeter probes. I assume you could use them for that, but... Thickness-wise of the included nickel strip, um, I'm not sure I have tools that can measure that thing. So, Here's uh, the results from a pair of plastic calipers. I'm sure that's going to be really accurate. It's uh, it looks like 0 0.1 uh, to me. It welds this really nicely, even at the pretty much the lowest setting. Let's look through the settings menu on the device first. Um, basically, you use these keys to navigate or change. This one selects, so preheat is essentially, it will, on preheat it will send a pulse of this length out, and then following that there will be a interval, so that's, so it'll preheat for this amount of time, it'll wait for this amount of time, and then it will weld for this amount of time. The default um, in the manual, the default for this should be 2 milliseconds. Um, I'm not sure how the rest can be set effectively. What I've been told is you should set it to the lowest that will provide good welds. I found that on this thin stuff, it basically like 2, 2, 2 works pretty well. But um, on batteries, if you weld with too much power, what you can do is you can punch through the casing and then the electrolyte leaks out of the battery and then batteries don't last very long, so you want to avoid that. Um, as for dots, basically in the settings menu there is a, there's a delay time and if you hold this, sorry, if you hold this on the workpiece for a certain amount of time, like you're holding it, after a delay it will repeat this cycle up to five times. And I guess that's for if you wanted to weld with more heat than it lets you. That's the current display for how much current your the last weld drew, drew. I don't know how that's measured. It's got a battery voltage, battery temperature, sound, and battery level, and that means it's ready. I think these just always flash, no matter whether the errors are triggered or not. Press this for a long time get into here, um, welding delay. So this is how long after you put the probes on, how long it'll wait before it sends the pulse. Let's back that off. And let's see, minimum and maximum is two seconds, zero to two seconds. And it's set to 0 0.8 by default. Interval, um, let's see, in the interval menu, up to 1.2 seconds between welds, um, and at minimum 0 
auto off. At most, auto off after an hour, at min, 30 minutes. That's good enough. Screen brightness. Volume. Uh-oh. Long pressing exits the menu. The volume is basically inaudible under half. That's a lot of settings for volume. Language, screen reverse. I guess uh, that's for if you wanted to weld the cables out here like that. Overheating protection. Okay, sure. Under voltage protection. So, oh, warning, not protection, but cool. Um, so that's basically an overview of the menus on the device. That turns it off. There you go. And a short press cycles between these and a long press turns it off. We grab a little uh, USB power um, and see it. Seems to output USB power whether or not it's in welding mode. Manual tells you not to charge it and discharge it at the same time, but I believe Try to see if that works. Plug that in. Charging. Yes, you can output and input at the same time. And here's a little phone cooler. Plug that in. Okay, so um, as you can see here, we can output and input at the same time, which is a great feature. Let's continue. I've already taken some of the panels off in preparation. It was quite easy to take them off. I just used an iFixit Jimmy, or you can use one of these cheap things. There are, there's left and a right. These panels are labeled. So, um, left, right. And they, go, and they just kind of snap on the sides like this. The clips are sort of got these uh, tangs facing inwards. So, pop them right off the sides. And then of course there are clips all over the sides. Um, I've taken those off already. So let's power off the device and open it. So this is inside. We have um, what looks like two pouch cells in parallel. And the batteries aren't the full thickness of that That's about how thick the batteries are. And let's get a quick measurement of the batteries. Roughly. There's four screws here. Now all this is gonna be live, so these are gonna be all powered, so you have to be a bit careful opening it. The screws just go into plastic. This is a 3.7 volt, or so, well, yeah, 3.7 volt batteries. You can pop these out. And the PCBA comes out. There's a little piece here that is more or less captive. So let's have a look at the PCB. So we have two MOSFETs on the side and two on here. They are 
NCE 30, they are NCE 30H29Ds uh, on all four of them. Yep. And I assume they're just in parallel. You got these nice, um, these brass bars to enhance the current carrying capability of the PCB. We have these screws to mount the battery to the PCB. So, as for microcontroller wise, I do not believe the microcontroller is on this board, it's on this board actually. You can see that. It's a Gihi EPM32 F103. So, this is a typical STM32 F8, no, F, uh, F103 clone. So, it's a, basically a clone of the Blue Pill microcontroller. And if we go a bit further, since we're in here, we can see the LCD as well as the three LEDs and buttons on the front panel. So we look under here, it doesn't appear to be anything under this foam. Um, you have a small LCD backlight, uh, ground TX RX, clock, DIO, that's going to be the um, firmware update interface, and that's a serial port of some sort. This is a pretty typical LCD assembly, probably an ST77, oh, there you go. That's model number of the LCD. So you just have that. Um, Overall, it's a fairly simply built device, but they clearly intend to build these in significantly higher volume than a lot of the other devices currently on the market, given um, the other devices are all made with a standardized aluminum aluminum uh, extrusion enclosure. This one's got all the uh, injection molded parts, actually quite a few parts. It's like four I count here. This is clearly intended to be a higher, high, higher volume, um, more polished product. And so far I haven't encountered any bugs with it. I remember hearing people talking about bugs on it. So on this board, there's not too much other than the microcontroller. Basically the microcontroller pins interface with the rest of the board with the standard FFC connector. Let's have a look here. Um, it's soldered a bit crooked, but it's no big deal. This looks like a power supply for the microcontroller over here. It's a, you can read the part numbers of the video. USB-C port, and we can see here that there's two uh, sensing resistors, current sense resistors, 22 milliohm, I believe, and those are sensing the current input and output, which is kind of interesting since they didn't really have to do that. Uh, that's not um, what it, I don't think that is what it uses to measure the current here. It does have a display on the bottom for welding current, but I haven't seen the shunt they use for that. For what it's worth, they could just uh, measure it across, you know, something here if they calibrate it. I'm not sure how accurate it would be. There is uh, a bit more housekeeping, DC-DC conversion. Looks like there's a photocoupler here, which is useful since um, there's definitely a lot of, there's definitely a lot of circuitry going on here. Batteries themselves do not look like they're protected. These are just the tabs that come out of the batteries. They're copper and they're just screwed down. There's a battery protection FET here, what looks like, or either that's a integrated chip or a FET on the negative of the battery, but that's only for charging protection. So if these MOSFETs were to go short, I believe there's nothing in the high current path here. So if the MOSFETs, well, if the MOSFETs were to go short, you would get really high current pulse on the uh, output. There's, not, there's nothing like a fuse or anything in here, I believe. 
I'm probably not going to open that one, open the battery itself up, but I do not think there's anything to see in there. Looks like the tabs go straight into the battery. I don't see a fuse or anything, so this probably, probably don't store this with these plugged in. Um, of course, if these FETs go short, um, that's not going to short out across the battery. That's going to simply put voltage across these two terminals, which are... They appear to be soldered, but they are also pressed in, and they're not soldered on the back. Maybe that's an improvement you can make. Um, solder them, but I don't think that's necessary. There's definitely quite a lot of copper on this PCB. So, so I don't think that would be a huge issue, but these, uh, one of the problems with this is that these pins are fairly close together uh, when plugged in. So um, there's a little, very small amount of, barely any, but there's a little bit of interference between them. So these are having a lot of stress put on them. Um, if I had to make a suggestion to them, it's to or you can trim down one side of this so they go in better. Which is uh, a bit of an oversight because it would have been pretty easy to move them. The screw holes for the casing, oh right, I forgot to mention. Screw holes for the casing, there's um, the screws under here, but not under here. Um, the screw holes are sort of there-ish. You need to peel this off, just peel it off the side and that side. Get to these two screws. And those just go into the screw bosses here. There's a temperature sensor for the battery, but it's not... It just sort of touches the battery, it doesn't... It's not glued there or anything. I believe it might be inserted in there or something, but... I think it just goes like that. Um, so this is probably not the most accurate thing in the world, but it'll do the trick. Overall, this seems like a fairly well-made piece of equipment. Um, it's fairly simple, like most of these spot welders are. I think it's a... I haven't, haven't... Obviously, I haven't had much of a chance to try this out on real battery yet. Um, I will soon, but for now, that was a simple teardown of the SWM-10 from Finercy. Um, since I didn't find another one online yet. Hope this was helpful to you, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll see if I can answer them at some point. Thanks!